All right, we are back episode two, three. Now, last episode, you all had the opportunity of hearing me get interviewed by Liv. And now we are going to flip roles here and I'm going to have the opportunity to interview Liv and um, really present uh, some cool opportunities for her to share her journey. You wanna go ahead and tell us a little bit about who you are your passions, your career, and journey so far? Sure. So, well, I grew up in Indiana. I was homeschooled from second grade all the way up until college. I think that's like a very important note and maybe give some information about who I am. Uh, after that point, I went to college in Nashville. I went to Lipscomb University and got my nursing degree. So I have my bachelor's of science in nursing and I worked as a nurse for three years after that, um, mostly in like step down unit, critical care type settings and learned a lot. Um, it was never something that I was super passionate about going through school. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I liked health and science and it, didn't include any math, so it seemed like a good enough option. Um, and I learned a lot through it, even though I knew it wasn't quite exactly what I wanted to do. Before I went to college, I took a course online. It was called Institute for Integrative Nutrition, where I learned about a bunch of different diets and just mindsets around health and fitness. And that kind of collided with my nursing background as well as my own interest in training, bodybuilding specifically, um, and has just all together combined to lead to my current role as a health and fitness coach. So with that, I coach both lifestyle and competitor clients. I myself am a competitive bodybuilder. I earned my pro card in women's figure in 2020 and am currently in off season, but coaching others who are on that same journey or on their own journey in terms of developing a healthy relationship with food. Um, part of my background it includes struggling with anorexia from I was about 15 or so on. And I say on because I think it's something that I still kind of battle with, but definitely something that's a lot less a part of my life now. And I've been able to kind of turn it around and use it constructively in coaching. So as a coach, my primary objective is to help someone identify their goals in regards to their health and fitness, and then build the confidence to pursue them so that they can operate independently and continue to establish healthy routines and habits around food and training, whatever that looks like based on their lifestyle and goals. Um, after Indiana and my schooling in Nashville, I moved to Texas and that was right before I competed and then more recently moved out here to North Carolina. So I'm coaching online full time and have just really been working on expanding my life and identifying who I am and what I want most. So that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I think one of the questions I wanted to ask from that is how you set goals and how you work towards achieving those goals. What's your process look like with that? That has kind of changed over time. Um, I think initially I set goals based on what I thought I should be doing based on what I saw other people doing or what I thought I saw other people doing based on their Instagram, which is not the truth, people. Um, so now I'm really currently working on identifying goals based on first my values. So I had to kind of back it up and identify what my values were and then identify where I want to be. So I'm currently working on a goal setting project to specifically set goals for the next year. And um, that's been part of that process has been looking at my vision in the next 10 years, where I want to be, what I want to accomplish, what does my life look like? And then backing that up to, okay, what should my life then look like in one year in order to 
accomplish that 10 year goal, seeing that as a stepping stone. And then I'm going to break that down further into what are the daily habits then that would contribute to achieving those goals within the next year. So I think it really starts with zoning into who you are, you know, at your core, what are your values? And then, and sometimes that's something that you have to find out before you can rename them and reframe them based on looking at your life and what you're currently doing. Um, but then you rewrite your values, decide what you really want, and then you kind of build your goals up out of there. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that is a massively difficult process to go through. And it sounded like you had some experience of finding who you were, um, even in going from nursing to being a fitness coach. Um, do you want to talk a little, a little bit about why you decided to pursue that passion and what about coaching is, is that passion for you? Yeah. So like I said, nursing wasn't really something I was loving. There's a lot of things I liked about it, but it, I knew it wasn't quite where I needed to be. I was just off the mark. And I, there was a point when, you know, I was pursuing my pro card and I did achieve that. And in terms of coaching, I was already coaching. I had started coaching when I was in high school and just coached a couple of people through college um, and then kind of picked it up more as kind of a side job from there. And right after I competed, my coaching just really blew up. You know, you get a lot of traction, you get a lot of traction on social media and in the bodybuilding industry. And then the connections I was making were also contributing to that traction. So I made that transition fully from nursing to coaching in September of 2020. And for the first time, just really felt like everything was in alignment. I got to use the knowledge that I had learned about health and the whole person and what all we need to be looking at from a systems perspective that I learned in nursing with my passion and natural interest as a bodybuilder and everything that I had learned in my own process with that. And as someone who had struggled with an eating disorder, which is something you commonly run into in the bodybuilding industry. So I felt like coaching was just the culmination of everything that I had been learning, like all the, all the different pursuits in my life that didn't seem related at the time, um, all kind of came together into this space and being able to work more or less for myself has given me the opportunity to shape coaching around what I really feel like I have built my expertise around. And I love it because like nursing, I get to play the servant role in terms of just supporting others to be the best, their best selves. But unlike nursing, I am not under like strict rules and regulations. And it's not just about charting and computer systems. And, but I also get to take those parts of it that I did love and kind of transfer them there. And just seeing one person's life changed um, just because of our work together and the conversations that we've had and just challenging them to believe in themselves. To me, that's the most fulfilling pursuit I could ever, I could ever go after. Yeah. I think it speaks in your voice, just how passionate you are uh, about coaching. And a question, I, we talked about my superpower last episode, and I really am curious uh, what you see as your superpower. And I want to ask one more question with that is you mentioned a lot about what you learned throughout that experience of nursing and how you've learned a lot of different things, especially learning self. And so I would just love to know that superpower that you think to be the thing that makes you unique in, in you, what, where you learn that and what um, are you now learning that you using that superpower can do for others? Yeah, that's hard for me. I will say it's hard for me to identify my gifts, but I think if you, you know, if you're like me and you kind of struggle with that, look at what people have told you, people you care about and just find the themes and one thing that I've heard is, and this goes into why my Instagram handle is what it is, is that I'm like an old soul. And what I see that is, is just being like a calm presence. Um, I feel like I can just kind of 
be this steady person there for someone in their time of struggle and support them and just be what they need in that moment. Um, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily like a helper fixer type. I'm more of that in terms of the Enneagram, like type one perfectionist, but I do like to help people problem solve and um, just be help provide that state that they need to be in to work through their struggles. I learned that a lot in nursing because you have to be very calm in times that are some of the worst moments of people's lives, watching their mom die in front of them or hearing that they're never going to get well. And you just have to be there for them and meet them in that moment emotionally and, and take your own feelings out of it and just create some calm around them. And that's something that I found I was really good at. And I was able to work with a lot of very difficult patients. I was sometimes assigned to difficult patients because they tended to find me very calming. So I definitely think that that was, that's something that I can confidently say as a gift because I have seen it play out so in different roles in my life. I think that's really cool. Um, I think being one that gets to experience that calmness, it's really a very strong superpower of yours. So I wanna encourage you to continue that. Um, I guess another question that I wanna ask is, uh, what is something you're you know, striving to overcome and what has been a barrier moving forward for you? Yeah, it's interesting how much I feel like I stand in my own way. I really don't think there's a lot of things in my life particularly that are external and have prevented me from pursuing what I want to. I think it's much more just me standing in my own way due to lack of self-belief. So one thing I'm working to overcome is maybe some assumptions that I've held over time that empowering yourself or believing in yourself or speaking well of yourself or identifying your own strengths is um, arrogant or it is an excuse to, con- to not continue growing as mm-hmm. if saying I am enough is equivalent to saying Therefore, I don't need to work harder. And so in my own life, I've, I've failed to empower myself because I often found that, or I feared that if I did, then I wouldn't then still be motivated to continue growing. So one thing I'm working to overcome is needing to depend on negative self-talk to keep myself motivated and to focus on empowering myself and using both my like deep seated knowledge of who I am, but also trust in God's faithfulness based on his past expressions in my life that I will be able to achieve that which I set my mind to if it's in his plan. So just, just really uh, working on establishing like a song strong sense of self belief. Yeah, that's, I, I would love to know um, what some of those past experiences that you can hold on to as truth are, how God has shown up before that allow you to really see truth and remove some of those thoughts or non empowering kind of self-talk experiences that you are working to overcome now. Yeah. Um, you know, I've always been really hard on myself. And so I put a lot of pressure on myself around school And I really went into every semester of college thinking I'm going to (laughs) fail. You know, I I would hit that first week or two of classes and realize how many assignments were due and how I was going to have to be balancing clinicals at weird hours on top of chapel credits, on top of my actual classes, on top of working. Um, And I would just panic. And then every semester I would come out, you know, at the top of my class and I was able to graduate with honors and I didn't take the time to recognize how, how much of an accomplishment that was with how much fear I did have. But looking back now, I can see that was God's faithfulness and just carrying me through that on top of at that time, really struggling with an eating disorder, really not eating enough to fuel my brain or body. Um, And I honestly think I could have died from that. And 
um, anorexia is very, very dangerous and has a poor prognosis. And just the fact that I've been able to work through that and, you know, without any significant health issues and without a lot, I say a lot of long-term psychological damage with how well I've been able to just continue on with my life. Um, I definitely think that's another example of God's faithfulness in my life. Um, and then, man, in terms of more recently, I think, you know, I've gone through a lot of life changes in this past year. I'm currently in the middle of a divorce and recently came out to my family and friends um, after no indication of that previously in my life. So that has led to a lot of massive life changes, but just seeing how much love I've received from family and friends and people I don't even know, and the fear of being shamed has been dissolved by this love, to me is just one massive example of God's faithfulness and work in my life, which should continue to inform how I move forward, knowing facing that fear wasn't something that ruined my life. It was something that allowed me to begin living. Yeah. With having such a year of experiences and ability to reflect, do you have a uh, overarching biggest goal of the year moving forward? Are you uh, focusing on you know, those experiences that you're currently going through, setting specific goals for those? What does this year in your goal setting look like? Great question. So I will say I'm still in the middle of kind of establishing my specific goals for this year. I've started with some monthly goals and they've really empowered me and just being able to prove to myself that I can set goals and stick with them no matter how long I've been battling with some of them. Um, and then I'm working on right now, really specifying where I want to be within the year. But I definitely have goals around my physique in terms of, you know, taking advantage of this time that I have in off season to just embrace growth. I don't want to be competing for years on end. So I want to make the most of this off season and really show up next year at a new level so that I can just compete and know that I put in the time that I needed and show up, you know, instead of thinking, well, I have years to pack on size. I have years to make this happen. I want to make it happen as soon as possible, which means really spending time investing in this period, which is also tying into facing some food related fears that I still have that are residual from my uh, days of eating disorder. Um, so working on like addictions around food, like excessive amounts of caffeine or artificial sweeteners. Like I've cut, I cut out caffeine last month and cut out sweeteners this month. And I'm just really kind of proving to myself that I can really finally face those things. And then from a business perspective, I'm just continuing to build a client base. I'll be traveling with no switch fitness this year. So I want to make connections through that, continue building up YouTube, continue just being consistent with this podcast and my applied resistance podcasts. And, and then there's an aspect of giving it to God. So setting those specific goals and then saying, okay, I'm going to pour my heart and soul into these areas and you take it from there and just show me where I need to be spending more of my time and energy. So as of right now, that's how specific my goals are. I will continue to find those a little bit more and we'll be happy to share those. Yeah. Those are some amazing goals to set moving forward. I wanted to uh, ask you, you're, you have your hands and feet in a lot of different areas. You have your own coaching business. You're a bodybuilder yourself, working your own goals personally in bodybuilding, but you're also part of No Switch Fitness and your own YouTube channel. You kind of have your own brand being built as well. And uh, something that I feel is, is a really cool question to ask you is what your legacy is, what you want people to say uh, about you when you are no longer here? Wow, that was a great question. Um, I really, I used to say that I just, if I could have one person tell me that I made a difference in their life. And what's been so cool about coaching is I've gotten the opportunity and the privilege to hear that multiple times 
And I think it's just now overarching that I was someone who made people feel that they could accomplish what they set their mind to, you know, that I empowered them in and helped build their self-belief to pursue their goals. Not so much that I helped them, but that I gave them the space to believe that they could do it. Yeah. Was there somebody or something that you were told that you've really held on to that grounds you in uh, maintaining that legacy that you want to leave that reminds you of uh, who you are in that moment? I'm not sure that there's like one phrase that's really stuck with me. Um, I really find that I'm a quote person, I'm a phrase person, and I find different quotes over time that kind of serve me. Um, But I have like a couple things that stick with me. Uh, When I was in college and I was not focused on my spirituality at all, the one thing that stuck with me was this little mantra that I had where I would just breathe in and I would think in this moment, and breathe out, I am enough. And that's something I go back to a lot. And it sounds really simple because it is, but it's the thing I forget most often. I get really focused on forward momentum and learning more and doing more and trying to just keep uh, progressing and succeeding and you know accomplishing different milestones. And I forget that I have everything I need right now. So that's something I often go back to. And then something I started saying during prep was head down, eyes up. And for me, that just means putting those blinders on to the world, putting those blinders on to what everyone's doing around me, to what I think I should be doing based on comparison to what I'm hearing from people. Not that people are even have negative intentions about it, but when people try to put their limitations on you and I don't need to take that in. It's like just saying like head down, focusing on the goals, eyes up on what God has for me. So those are the two things I feel that really, really drive me and that I go back to when I'm, when I'm needing clarity. Yeah. My my last, last question that I have for you is now that you have that to hold on to, you know, what is one piece of encouragement or advice that you would give to someone else starting their journey, their self-discovery journey, uh, or just a journey period from day one moving forward? You are not the sum of your failures. And while we can take pieces of our past, your past does not inform your future. You're not limited by the things you've been able to accomplish in the past because every day you're given more and more tools and insight and wisdom in order to continue growing. Growth is uncomfortable and it's usually not going to happen in the way or in the area that you're expecting or hoping for. So you need to be open-minded and find the opportunities around you and trust sometimes that they're not going to be what you expect and you have to just face them head on. Fear also will not kill you. As hard as it is, it will not kill you, not quickly. But fear will kill you slowly by taking your life from you if you allow it to. Mm -hmm. So I think identifying your fears first and foremost can really inform where you need to actually turn your attentions to in life. Um, I believe from my worldview that God didn't give us a spirit of fear and love is not of fear. So when I experience fear in my life, I know that it's not of God. I know that that's not something that not necessarily that I shouldn't be feeling it, but that it's an area in which I'm, I'm lacking faith or I'm lacking some focus. Um, So sometimes facing your fears is the first step towards accomplishing your goals. Yeah. Well, that's really good. I think that's something I need to also hold on to. Um, thank you for being so vulnerable and for sharing all of that with, with me and with all of us that are listening. Uh, is there anything else you want to share, say before we peace out and, um, you know, move forward towards episode three or four next week? Uh, that's about it. You know, I'm happy to answer any questions. So I'll put my 
email in the description below. Um, you can also DM me through Instagram at old soul made new. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions, even if it's not coaching related, but if you're interested in that as well, I always have opportunities for that. So would be more than happy to answer any questions or if you want to reach out. Awesome. Thank you for listening and we will see you next week.